What's going on YouTube? Technician Troy again. Working on the last little bits of the Sonoma to get it prepared for No Name Nationals. And uh, in case you're a new subscriber here, No Name Nationals, there's a race coming up in September. It's a drag race. Got to have 500 subscribers. So uh, I've been recording me changing parts and pieces out on this old girl right here to see if I can't take her down the track and uh, make a couple passes. Maybe actually do pretty good. I don't know. I have no idea how fast it is or anything. It's just, you know, fun little project. But today what we're going to be doing is we got to put some extended studs on the front. Reason being safety. So ARP studs, they're uh, two and a half inches long. The factory ones, very small. Uh, really short. The uh, other issue is, is these wheels are the wrong offset, the factory wheels. So, or not the factory wheels, my, my wheels that I've got on there are the wrong offset. So I've got a uh, quarter inch spacer in there. Not a huge fan of spacers because they shorten the amount of stud that you have inside the lug nut. So this will fix that issue, make me feel a little bit more safe. Also, I got the skinnies mounted. So we got the uh, Mickey Thompson. Uh, these are the Sportsman SR tires. Got these for a pretty good deal. Mounted them up here in the house and then uh, went and got them balanced out. So we're going to test fit these guys on here. Make sure everything's wheel clearance wise and everything. Make sure that the tire's all cleared. And uh, I believe we should be okay with that. I don't think it's going to be a problem, but you never know what we could run into. So we're going to get into it. We're going to swap some studs out real quick. Kind of show you all what's going on with that. See how hard that's going to be. There should be so much more stud inside those lug nuts, but there's not. So that's why we're doing this. Kind of not a fun time whenever your lug nut breaks and your nuts just go flying everywhere. So let's get these guys out of the way. I'm not really excited about that. These guys are about a year old and they got a crack. See what I mean, the wrong offset? Check this out, a little bit of rubbish. Had to fix that with this whole crap quarter inch spacer. It got into the uh, control arm a little bit. That took care of it though. Not really a big fan of it, but it's better than ruining a wheel, I guess, more than what it was. What was the, where's the DOT number on this guy? When was this produced? Well, they are 2021 tires, but I bought them last year. Oh well, get them warranted out. That's why we buy the road hazard, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Tell them, hey, I got a problem with your tire. Fix it. All right, next thing we gotta do, get the wheel off, pull this stupid spacer out of the way. We gotta take this here, take the brake caliper loose. I'm hoping this design, I believe, it's been a while. You gotta remember I had a 95 S10 back in high school. Uh, it was more of a, just a lowered, low and slow show kind of truck, but I believe I can just take the caliper off and I should be able to just knock these studs out and put them in. If I can't, then I have to actually unpack or undo the bearing and all that. And I just, I didn't plan on that. What I'm saying is I ain't grabbed enough tools right now. That's all I'm saying. Pads go flying everywhere. Just gonna let that guy hang. Oh yeah, I think I've got enough room. I think that's gonna work. Oh yeah. Let me get in there and look real quick. I don't know. Let's just smack it with a hammer and see what happens. There went one. gone forever. Let's show you the difference here between the factory and the extended ones. These are ARP. Anybody knows anything about racing products? ARP stands for automotive racing products. Good studs, head bolts, head studs, good stuff. This is your factory lug stud. All right, it's about an inch, inch and an eighth long, inch and a quarter long. This is what we'll be putting in. So we'll have a lot more engagement 
a lot more threads holding the wheels on. And that's pretty much what you want when you're, you know, running down a racetrack. So let's knock the rest of these out. Pretty simple, they're not screw in, these are press in. My rear ones are screw in on the nine inch. This is where we're gonna get into a bit of a controversial thing here. And I'll show you guys what I mean. So me being an actual technician for my daily job, uh, I have run into many times where I'm cheap. You know what I mean? I don't wanna spend no money on tools. Studs get broke all the time. You're taking wheels off and on. And uh, there's a lot of people out there that just take a castle nut, bunch of washers, random nuts that they've had left over from jobs. What I mean by that is they put all the rate bolts back, but they, they've got old bolts that they've kept, you know, from suspension components, crown nuts, castle nuts, whatever you want to call them. And I'll see them put them on there and they just mar up the, the rotor, they, they twist, they, they don't really pull right. So what we're going to use is the correct tool. This is actually a stud installer. It's got a bearing built into the bottom. You can see how it spins. And that actually alleviates the pressure on the stud. So it actually pulls the stud in and then all of the outside turns. So it's the correct way. Now, the only big problem I'm gonna have is these are two and a half inches. These are not gonna be long enough. That is typically what I would use. So I might have to sacrifice my one random actual weld lug stud. These are for my weld wheels here, my drag light specials, drag lights, whatever. They actually center the stud. They've got a, they've got a washer that goes in there. Um, and I've got, they sell these in a pack of four. Let's, let's just talk about this for a minute, okay? Let me, let me vent, all right? Uh, I get it. There's some, there's some four lug cars out there racing. Uh, but let's be honest, weld do better. Sell these in a five pack, man. Why do I gotta buy three packs to get 12 lug nuts? Come on, I got five. You know, I get it, if there's six lug, you get four. You know, I'm sure that math works out somewhere, common core, public school math, I don't know. Y'all are probably smarter than me. They probably got engineers and stuff that all talk about that. But I wish they sold them in a five pack. ARP studs are sold in a five pack. Warranties. That's all I'm saying. Get off my, my soapbox now. So, I'll show you how this works real quick. Super easy. Put your stud in there. I put a little bit of lube on the knurl. You just take this guy, slide it over. Take this. The reason why I don't really want to use this, and I hate using this, but I'm going to because this is what I got. That's a 60 inch conical right here. You got your little ramp. This one doesn't have that. It's flat because it's supposed to just bolt directly to that. And the shank is what holds the wheel centered. These conicals, the 60 inch ramp on them is actually what centers the wheel on the hub with the other wheels. So let's just get this a spin, get it close. And send her home. So we go on to the next ones. And you just repeat the process, that's it. I gotta do it both sides. Like I said, I just lube it up a little bit. Stab it in. Put that guy there. Typically you can look behind these and actually see the knurl, how far they go in. I can actually feel it. So I'm actually just gonna keep my thumb on it, my finger on there, and it lets me know when it's in there. Typically you can hear the, the tool gear down a bit. It'll start to get the uggas and the duggas will start to get a little bit louder. Uh, and that means it's starting to labor a little bit more, which means it's probably bottomed out. Like that. Next. Where's your hole? There it is. Probably not a bad idea to actually put a little bit of lube on the nut. I mean, on the, uh, that guy. Just a heads up. I didn't have any PV blaster or penetrating oil. I'm using a little white lithium grease. Uh, it'll work. I'll clean it off later though. I don't like, I don't like the residue of the white lithium grease just staying near the brakes.
two more on this side. And then obviously once we get done here, we'll repeat the process on the other side. Plan on taking this to the drag strip fairly soon. If I can't get it this weekend, I'll try to get it there next weekend, make a couple passes. Might see some familiar faces. Safety, go safety third. Or fur, whatever they say, you know. All right. So that's all five of the studs. Let's give it a spin, make sure nothing's there. We'll make sure nothing's gonna hit. Put the brakes back on. This design that's I kind of wished wish they would never really went away from it I'm sure there's a reason but I like the fact that these slide pins are what hold the caliper on and when you pull them off the rotor can come right off no bracket around it all that kind of stuff where do I put my tool there it is I like the way this is designed they work well I'll probably be upgrading these to Willwood brakes at some point because you know if you're gonna go fast, you might as well stop pretty quick too. If not, that wall's gonna catch it. Or that car or whatever. Tighten these up. We'll be able to check out wheel fitment. We should be good to go. All right, so let's try this guy out. Obviously, no spacer, no quarter inch spacer. Oh, and for anybody wondering, these caps, these are unit, these are dual drilled patterns. Uh, this is obviously four on, uh, or this is obviously five on four and three quarter. Um, and this is gonna be five on, I believe, four and a half or five. Don't quote me on that. I don't know, I've never had a vehicle that didn't take a five on four and three quarter. I got a Monte Carlo sitting over there in the other place and it's a five on four and three quarter. So these little caps, all they do is keep crap and dirt and debris and corrosion out of these holes because this collar inside here, it, it's actually not attached. It's a two piece mag wheel and, and it pushes together and this is actually what you're centering. That's why you have these shanks because that's actually what you're centering in the wheel. So a little less than that, nothing serious, but let's see how these work. Oh yeah, many better, many goods. See, this is why you want to center them up. You never tighten them up all the way. You want to get them started because right now I'm actually sitting on the collar on the inside. So it's got it bound up. See how much it loosened it up? So you just kind of. Got to tighten them up, loosen them up, back and forth, back and forth. Get them to go. For anybody that doesn't know anything about these shank style, they come with these washers, obviously. They are rounded on one side and the other side, if you buy the welded, the weld brand, weld wheels brand, they actually will tell you wheel side. This is the flat side. What that's gonna actually do, it's got a bevel in it. And whenever you actually tighten it up and torque it down, it'll flatten out against the wheel. Just helps disperse the pressure and make sure the wheel stays torqued. So. All right. Now what we'll do, we'll lower it down off the jack stand here and I'll torque it down. And that is an installed wheel. But before we do that, I'm going to make sure that this has got plenty of clearance. Listen for anything rubbing. I hear nothing. It moves nice and easy. And what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna actually turn the wheel full lock, full lock, make sure we don't get into the uh, the uh, sway bar or into the frame or anything like that. You, I just wanna make sure I've got clearance and then I'll lower it down on this wheel, make sure I'm clear here. Obviously, my front tire, my front wheel, this is an eight inch wide wheel. Tire size, I do believe is a 225, no, it's a 215.70. So realistically, that's a 26 by six inch wheel or tire. That's a five inch wide wheel. We should be fine, but 
God forbid you're not, and then something catastrophic happened. So I'm gonna I'm gonna lower it down here in a second and uh, make sure we clear there and see what happens. So let's check it out. Oh yeah, I got plenty of room here. Away from the fender, it's quite a bit lower than the fender. Don't tell me. Did it clear? That was your job. You didn't know that? What good are you to me? Obviously, I checked that prior to doing all this. But yes, it does clear. We don't hit the frame, or we don't hit the uh, we don't hit the sway bar. We don't hit the frame. We're plenty far away from the uh, fender here, and uh, we're good to go. We'll just do it on the other side. We'll be ready to go racing, ladies and gentlemen. Like, subscribe. Share it to a friend. Give me that 500. I want to see you guys and girls at No Name Nationals. I appreciate it. Technician Troy.